This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Now then, you might recall that last Tuesday I did uh, one of my Why I Love This Album videos, and the album in question then was Gary Moore's Still Got The Blues. And uh, when I was talking about the different tracks on the album, we got to Texas Strut, and I said, watch out for a solo analysis video on that, uh, on that track. And, well, today is that video. So coming up next, you're going to hear me uh, play the uh, one of the solos from Texas Strut and basically have a little bit of a breakdown of what's going on in the solo. Here it is. Okay then, let's begin this little breakdown by taking a look at uh, what the solo is played over, and the truth is, not very much, it has to be said, there's no chords behind the solo, it's just bass and drums. However, the bass is kind of um, mimicking the rhythm guitar part that Gary plays throughout huge parts of the song, which goes like this. <laughs> Like that okay and that's kind of hinting at an a7 chord uh, part way through the solo we do move that up a tone to a b7 chord type idea and then back down to a and we kind of track that with the uh, the lead guitar parts so that's what what he's playing over um now let's have a look at what he's playing not surprisingly, because we're playing over uh, what is essentially, to all intents and purposes, an A7 chord in a blues setting, he's using a lot of A minor pentatonic. And in true blues um, kind of fashion, he's adding in snippets of A major pentatonic. Where you're kind of mixing the two scales together, you know, especially the, the third, the minor third from the minor pentatonic going to the major third from the major pentatonic. So... Lots of little kind of instances of that, as we will see. Uh, the solo begins with a bunch of licks that are all sort of based on a similar motif, uh, which goes like this. Like that there, you can see that minor and major third going on there. Uh, but it's the motif that really is the, um, the star of the show here. We're getting... Okay, and then he basically puts together a, a bunch of licks that come out of that same idea. The only difference really being is that on subsequent versions of it, as well as this G note here, he's also including the A note here. So you get that sort of clash between the uh, G and the A note. It's very, very Billy Gibbons sort of technique, which is entirely appropriate for a song called Texas Strut. So the next version of that lick goes... Like that, then we play the final uh, version of it, really, which goes like that, and then we round off this little part of the solo with that. Okay, so all that goes together to, pr to kind of produce like the first chapter of the solo, if you like. Then we kind of start off with a similar but slightly different motif where we go. Like that again, we're getting a nice, another nice little dissonant thing here between this F sharp and this C note here, and the slight bend on the F sharp. Typical kind of bluesy rock and roll kind of fare, really. And as I say, what does it go? Um, like that. Then again, kind of establishing the motif and then coming up with a different variation on it. And then just reiterating it some more. Notice how we're bringing in the uh, the flat fifth there, the blue note. 
little kind of passing note that's happening in there. And now we're on the, uh, the, the climb up to the section where we go up to the B chord. And what he does here is he just takes that little kind of lick that he's been playing there and just moves it up chromatically. It just adds a nice bit of dissonant tension. So you get... Okay, and by now we're in the in the B7 uh, section of the tune. And once again, it's going to be a lot of B minor and B major pentatonic. Same two shapes that we look at down there. There's the minor. There's the major and, you know, kind of lots of that kind of uh, minor to major kind of um, crossover going on. The first lick that we play, now we're up in the new home key of B major, is... Like that, and then we play like probably the fastest lick in the solo, which is not fast by Gary standards, but it does add a nice little bit of uh, flashiness to proceedings. I'll play it slowly. It goes. Like that, so. Um, there we go. And then we're into the closing stages of the solo, really, where we just go up to this big bend at the 12th fret which is, you know, kind of phrased in sort of offbeats and triplets and stuff like that. Don't worry too much about the rhythmic aspect of this. You can tell Gary isn't. It's He's just caning that bend there and putting as much grit and grunt and soul into it as possible. So, And very much an Albert King kind of technique that's going on there. When you bend the string like that, if you then kind of do it with an upstroke... You can hear how you're getting those overtones from the uh, from the adjacent strings, and it it sounds gloriously dissonant in a good way. And then we finish off the solo with this big three semitone bend at the fourteenth fret before slamming back down into the the uh, main rhythm guitar part back there and back into the next verse. So that's. A bit of an idea of what's going on in this solo from Gary Moore's Texas Strut. And as always, there is a full tab in both Guitar Pro and PDF formats, along with a jam track to play along with, and that little clip that you've just seen there of me playing and explaining the solo, that's all up on my Patreon page. There's the address, link in the description. And that's pretty much it for you today, folks. I just want to say a massive thank you to all of the people who are supporting me on Patreon, and um, in any other way that uh, you might be helping me keep the lights on around here. All the light links, rather, are downstairs in the description box for the Patreon and the courses and all of that sort of stuff. As I say, thank you so much if you're already doing that, and thank you in advance if you're thinking of um, doing anything along those lines. Much appreciated. But with that, I'll bid you all a good day and say thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your time. Look after yourselves, folks. Stay well, stay safe, and above all, stay sane. Bye for now.